Today is July 20th in the year 2022. The temperatures are hot but noticeably only warm from where I'm standing. And on days like this where I really don't want to confront the heat because I choose cold weather as my preferred climate, I like to stay close to trees. And on these days, I do things that interest me to a large degree, which is reading. And part of my reading is my desire to gain a better understanding of how all these things were allowed to happen to me, my children, and my animals, and my grandchildren. And so I typically read case law because to gain a better understanding of all these things that are pretty much abnormal. The only way that you can grasp an understanding is to read some case law. So this morning I decided to read the case. It's a California case. It's Robinson versus United States. And this case started as the result of a fire that occurred. The fire itself was planned as a controlled burn. And the reason, from what I understand on this controlled burn, was to get rid of injurious weeds, as odd as that may seem, but, you know, I don't know if these weeds are man-eating weeds. I don't know if they have the ability to pick their roots up and walk into the, you know, into crowds and pluck their poisonous thorns into people. I don't, you know, I don't know why they had to burn these weeds. I haven't got that far in my research. So anyways, they had to burn these weeds on this ranch, the Loudon Ranch, a 2,000 acre ranch. And you can never sit outside without some bug coming by. <laughs> Make it all rhyme. <laughs> you know, they got to get in the picture somehow. <laughs> um, so it was supposed to be this controlled burn, right? That got out of control. And it burnt down 23 properties in the process. And so, although I'm still researching for a clearer understanding of why, you know, the question of why is very, very important. But, um, The Robinsons, a husband and a wife, who were affected by this burn. Their house was burnt, their garage was burnt, their shed was burnt, an outbuilding was burnt. Their, the contents of the properties all burnt. And they attempted at the lower court level to make claim for compensation because of their cited action in the case was that they felt that the government was neglectful in their actions and that they trespassed on their land. At the lower courts, they denied any type of wrongdoing and therefore denied any type of compensation to the parties. The Robinsons then appealed the decision of the lower courts and it went 
forth to the higher courts. In the higher courts, although I can say I'm not shocked by this after what I have experienced, it does beg the question of where does the line of ethics, the line of morals, the lines of safety, security, and well-being. Where does all that stuff come into play? Because I have not seen that in any of the cases that I have that I've read, and I've read a lot of them. Nor have I ever seen a case where the decision was made on behalf of an individual, not the government or the government's employees. So at the higher level, they reaffirmed the lower level's decision in that they found that the government was not neglectful. And in order to compensate for emotional distress, they would have to prove, the Robinsons would have had to prove, that there was intent. And although no one can question the damages done, there will be no compensation for under neglect, okay? The other portion of that was, as far as the personal items, which the Robinsons did not place a value on because they, those things were sentimental to them, both the lower and the higher court firmly agreed that personal property carries market value and market value only. And in both, both decisions, I strongly disagree. The neglect piece, I disagree because the neglect also carries the weight of a duty to care. And <clears throat> The pre-planning stage for this burn should have included safety nets, evacuation plans. In the event that it doesn't, you know, we're anticipating that it's going to go this way, but in the event that it goes this way and it starts to grow out of control, we have to have X number of resources available and on hand. And we need to, you know, be able to actively move to uh, secure the safety and well-being of the people in the surrounding areas. So I totally disagree with that whole thought process because the intent can be pushed away to a large degree by the failure of planning accordingly, okay? And the other piece about the personal property where they value things at market value, I totally disagree with that as well. Because a family photo placed in a frame is something of value. It's a personal, tangible, an object you can pick up and carry with you item that carries priceless value. And the reason why it's priceless is because, I'm going to use myself as an example. If I had a photograph or portrait or any picture that I had in a frame when I was eight years old, taken when I was eight years old, standing in another state on a certain day at a certain time of that day, and in that picture included my mother, my father, my grandmother, and a few other people, that are no longer here, you cannot duplicate that picture. You can't return to the same spot 50 years later at the age of 58 and have somebody take a picture of you that includes people that are no longer here. And once that photograph, that picture is gone, and it's no longer in your tangible property where you have, you know, you can pick it up with your own hands and fingers and touch it on a regular basis. 
the emotions attached with not touching something that you've always touched causes some type of emotional turmoil. I can say this because this is what happens with me. And the Robinsons specifically mentioned their distress in that they didn't know there was a time period that had passed after the buildings had been burnt that they didn't know if their family was alive or if they were consumed in the fire. And during that time period, they were under undue emotional distress. Even though it doesn't, you know, say this in what I've read so far, the fact that the Robinsons, no different than me, can, can no longer step through the threshold of their own home and touch the things that they last touched only moments, hours, days before. And they were all in a certain place, familiar to you, because it's your surroundings. And it's not only your surroundings, but it, it, it's a true reflection of you. Everything that's in that surrounding is all about you. It's your identity. Because you can't touch those things anymore, they're not within your grasp, that causes emotional distress. It's alarming to an individual. And if it doesn't happen based on the course of a natural disaster where things are leveled because Mother Nature takes those things from you, and they're taken from you by other people, or by the government, or they're destroyed, <clears throat> excuse me, then your thoughts that you previously had while all those things were intact in a same place within your reach, your thoughts now become distorted differently from what they once were. So, <clears throat> in my case, I no longer view the flag of the United States as anything other than a piece of cloth that represents total trash. And I view that that way because I served in the military. I was not treated fairly in the military. I suffered through 30 or more years in a community where they didn't want me there to begin with and why they wouldn't just let me leave and kept they kept attaching things to me to prevent me from leaving because they obviously thought it was fun and most enjoyable to do what they were doing because nobody ever said what are you doing to this woman and her children? This is unacceptable in our community. What are you doing? No one ever said anything like that. So it changes your thought process and distorts what you previously believed about, like, the United States. You know, we go to school... You know, I didn't go to kindergarten, but first grade to, to, you know, your senior year before you graduate, they make you believe that this country is something of value and worth, and that we're all part of that value and worth, when in all reality, we're not. We're all disposable to the whims of the government employees, which are never held accountable for anything, ever. I don't care if they packaged up people in the back end of a tractor trailer, squished them all in as sardines, and drove them from the east to the west coast to some desert location and torched the trailer. People would at first go, oh my God, that happened. And then they would turn around and say, well, it was all in the line of the duty. It's in their job description, it's okay. 
when morally and ethically it's not okay. The things that are occurring today are not okay. And for people to continuously blow up the roles of these government employees and downplay anybody else's efforts on this planet, it totally blows my mind. But the most interesting thing that I've learned from reading all these cases is the government and their employees are never ever held accountable for any of their actions. Regardless of the number of lives lost, they're never held accountable. But if you and I were to do the same exact thing that they did, we would be placed in prison if not executed. And to me, that's not fair. You can't have a judicial system that only favors certain people that are on a payroll, paid for and sponsored by all taxpayers across the board. But we have that. So I'm gonna leave um, the links in the description so that you guys can read the case for yourself. And I will leave a couple links to news articles regarding that fire, the Loudon Ranch fire. And feel free to look it up yourself. But I'm kind of blown away at the fact that the negligence piece, which is really the duty to care. Do you care enough to put enough protocol and safety guards in, into projects that you're working on? so that things don't get out of control or cost more money or lose lives. And the other one is, you know, this whole thing where personal belongings, somebody's personal effects and belongings are just tossed away. It happened to me and I'll never recover from it because it really is identity theft of my identity, my children's identities, my grandchildren's identities and uh, you know the things I was holding in my house that's their identity and my my animals even though if you may not look at animals the same way that I do but their identity was in my house as well and it's all gone and there's no court or jurisdiction anywhere here on any of this land that you can go to for any type of remedy because you can't remedy that situation they took it too far it's destruction of a human life at its finest it is what it is